How's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a good year and enjoyed friends and family. Uh, today I have another message and uh, it's going to be uh, all throughout the Bible. And I hope that you follow along and open up your Bible and see what God has for you. So let's get going. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So who's this word? Who's the light that shined in darkness? Let's find out. He who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or in heaven. That was Colossians 1, 13 through 20. So now let's read Exodus 20. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and 
keep my commandments. So let's move to Isaiah 46, verse 3. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb, and even to your old age, I am he, even to your gray hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry and I will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? They lavish gold out of a bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he maketh a God and they fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulders, they carry him and set him in his place, and he standeth. From his place shall he not remove. Yea, one shall cry unto him, yet can he not answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this, and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. Let's go to Romans 1, verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. So there's a God. And we know that. We all know that. Even if you deny him, you know that. You might say it with your mouth, but in the dark by yourself, you know that. There is a God. Jeremiah 7. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest not thou what they do in the cities and in the streets. The children gather wood and the fathers 
kindle the fire. And the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do not provoke me to anger. Saith the Lord, do they not provoke themselves to confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, upon beast, upon the trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Why was that? The queen of heaven? A false god? Might want to think about that. Let's read Isaiah 44. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not prosper. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor they know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a God or molten image that is profitable? Are they profitable? For nothing. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh the coals, and fashion it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh out with a line. He fit it with planes, and he marketh it out with a compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedar and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash and the rain doeth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god, and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He burneth part of it in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth the roast and is satisfied, yea, he warmeth himself, and say, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire, and the residue thereof he maketh it a god. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut his eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? 
He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? So the world now says there is no God. And yet, they're making idols of everything that they can find because there's a need in our heart for God, the creator, the one true God. Let's keep reading. Isaiah 1, verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless and plead for the widow. Come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So, we all fit into these categories. But God is calling us and says, renew your actions, renew your mind, renew your heart. So let's keep going. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Wherein, in times past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we shall walk in him. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
For there is no difference between the Jew or the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 4 verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom we crucified, God raised from the dead, even by him. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the message. Uh, rewind it, re-listen to it, read it for yourself. God is talking to us. And I believe that these are the last days. How close we are, I don't know. Um, but it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get really ugly. Um, there's too many factors playing out in the world and this is worldwide this is not just here just in your surroundings on in your block in your city this is everywhere and people are looking and people are going to start bowing down to things that they ought not to if they're not already doing that god's calling us god's calling you god's calling me to stop bowing down to things that are not going to profit. Call upon him. Seek him. If you don't believe, look around. Look around. Examine your inner self. You know, deep inside you, you know, there's something more than what you can see. With the heart, you believe, and with the mouth confession is made. Call upon the Lord Jesus, and he shall save you. Thank you.